Question 13. A nurse hears a client calling out for help, hurries down the hallway to the client's room, and finds the client lying on the floor. The nurse performs a thorough assessment, assists the client back to bed, notifies the physician of the incident, and completes an incident report. Which of the following should the nurse document on the incident report? A. The client fell out of bed. B. The client climbed over the side rails. C. The client was found lying on the floor. D. The client became restless and tried to get out of bed. Correct answer. C. The incident report should contain the client's name, age, and diagnosis. The report should contain a factual description of the incident, any injuries experienced by those involved, and the outcome of the situation. Option 3 is the only option that describes the facts as observed by the nurse. Options 1, 2, and 4 are interpretations of the situation and are not factual information as observed by the nurse. Question 14. A client is brought to the emergency department by Emergency Medical Services, EMS, after being hit by a car. The name of the client is unknown, and the client has sustained a severe head injury and multiple fractures and is unconscious. An emergency craniotomy is required. Regarding informed consent for the surgical procedure, which of the following is the best action? A. Obtain a court order for the surgical procedure. B. Ask the EMS team to sign the informed consent. C. Transport the victim to the operating room for surgery. D. Call the police to identify the client and locate the family. Correct answer. C. Generally. There are two situations in which informed consent of an adult client is not needed. One is when an emergency is present and delaying treatment for the purpose of obtaining informed consent would result in injury or death to the client. The second is when the client waives the right to give informed consent. Option one will delay emergency treatment, and option two is inappropriate. Although option may fourth be pursued, it is not the best action. Question 15. A nurse has just assisted a client back to bed after a fall. The nurse and physician have assessed the client and have determined that the client is not injured. After completing the incident report, the nurse implements which action next? A. Reassess the client. B. Conduct a staff meeting to describe the fall. C. Document in the nurse's notes that an incident report was completed. D. Contact the nursing supervisor to update information regarding the fall. Correct answer. A. After a client's fall, the nurse must frequently reassess the client because potential complications do not always appear immediately after the fall. The client's fall should be treated as private information and shared on a need-to-know basis. Communication regarding the event should involve only the individuals participating in the client's care. An incident report is a problem-solving document, however, its completion is not documented in the nurse's notes. If the nursing supervisor has been made aware of the incident, the supervisor will contact the nurse if status update is desired. Question 16. A registered nurse arrives at work and is told to report, float, to the intensive care unit, ICU, for the day because the ICU is understaffed and needs additional nurses to care for the clients. The nurse has never worked in the ICU. The nurse should take which action first? A. Call the hospital lawyer. B. Refuse to float to the ICU. C. Call the nursing supervisor. D. Report to the ICU and identify tasks that can be performed safely. Correct answer. D. 
Floating is an acceptable legal practice used by hospitals to solve understaffing problems. Legally, a nurse cannot refuse to float unless a union contract guarantees that nurses can work only in a specified area or the nurse can prove the lack of knowledge for the performance of assigned tasks. When encountering this situation, the nurse should set priorities and identify potential areas of harm to the client. The nursing supervisor is called if the nurse is expected to perform tasks that he or she cannot safely perform. Calling the hospital lawyer is a premature action. Question 17. A nurse who works on the night shift enters the medication room and finds a coworker with a tourniquet wrapped around the upper arm. The coworker is about to insert a needle attached to a syringe containing a clear liquid, into the anticubital area. The appropriate initial action by the nurse is which of the following? A. Call security. B. Call the police. C. Call the nursing supervisor. D. Lock the co-worker in the medication room until help is obtained. Correct answer. C. Nurse Practice Acts require reporting impaired nurses. The Board of Nursing has jurisdiction over the practice of nursing and may develop plans for treatment and supervision of the impaired nurse. This incident needs to be reported to the nursing supervisor, who will then report to the Board of Nursing and other authorities, such as the police, as required. The nurse may call security if a disturbance occurs but no information in the question supports this need, and so this is not the initial action. Option 4 is an inappropriate and unsafe action. Question 18. A hospitalized client tells the nurse that a living will is being prepared and that the lawyer will be bringing the will to the hospital today for witness signatures. The client asks the nurse for assistance in obtaining a witness to the will. The appropriate response to the client is which of the following? A. I will sign as a witness to your signature. B. You will need to find a witness on your own. C. Whoever is available at the time will sign as a witness for you. D. I will call the nursing supervisor to seek assistance regarding your request. Correct answer. D. Living wills are required to be in writing and signed by the client. The client's signature must be witnessed by specified individuals or notarized. Laws and guidelines regarding living wills vary from state to state, and it is the responsibility of the nurse to know the laws. Many states prohibit any employee, including a nurse of a facility where the client is receiving care, from being a witness. Option 2 is non-therapeutic and not a helpful response. The nurse should seek the assistance of the nursing supervisor. Question 19. A nurse has made an error in a narrative documentation of an assessment finding on a client and obtains the client's record to correct the error. The nurse corrects the error by A. Documenting a late entry into the client's record. B. Trying to erase the error for space to write in the correct data. C. Using whiteout to delete the error to write in the correct data. D. Drawing one line through the error, initialing, and dating the line, and then documenting the correct information. Correct answer. D. If the nurse makes an error in narrative documentation in the client's record, the nurse should follow agency policies to correct the error. This includes drawing one line through the error, initialing, and dating the line, and then documenting the correct information. A late entry is used to document additional information not remembered at the initial time of documentation. Erasing data from the client's record and the use of whiteout are prohibited. Question 20. A nurse employed in a hospital is waiting to receive a report from the laboratory via the facsimile, fax, machine. 
The fax machine activates and the nurse expects the report, but instead receives a sexually oriented photograph. The appropriate initial nursing action is to a. Call the police. b. Cut up the photograph and throw it away. c. Call the nursing supervisor and report the incident. d. Call the laboratory and ask for the individual's name who sent the photograph. Correct answer. C. Sexual harassment in the workplace is prohibited by state and federal laws. Sexually suggestive jokes, touching, pressuring a coworker for a date, and open displays of or transmitting sexually oriented photographs or posters are examples of conduct that could be considered sexual harassment by another worker. If the nurse believes that he or she is being subjected to unwelcome sexual conduct, these concerns should be reported to the nursing supervisor immediately. Option 1 is unnecessary at this time. Options 2 and 4 are inappropriate initial actions. Question 21. A nursing instructor delivers a lecture to nursing students regarding the issue of clients' rights, and asks a nursing student to identify a situation that represents an example of invasion of client privacy. Which of the following, if identified by the student, indicates an understanding of a violation of this client right? A. Performing a procedure without consent B. Threatening to give a client a medication C. Telling the client that he or she cannot leave the hospital D. Observing care provided to the client without the client's permission. Correct answer. D. Invasion of privacy occurs with unreasonable intrusion into an individual's private affairs. Performing a procedure without consent is an example of battery. Threatening to give a client a medication constitutes assault. Telling the client that the client cannot leave the hospital constitutes false imprisonment. Question 22. Nursing staff members are sitting in the lounge taking their morning break. A nursing assistant tells the group that she thinks that the unit secretary has acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, AIDS, and proceeds to tell the nursing staff that the secretary probably contracted the disease from her husband, who is supposedly a drug addict. Which legal tort has the nursing assistant violated? A. Libel. B. Slander. C. Assault. D. Negligence. Correct answer. B. Defamation is a false communication or a careless disregard for the truth that causes damage to someone's reputation, either in writing, libel, or verbally, slander. An assault occurs when a person puts another person in fear of a harmful or an offensive contact. Negligence involves the actions of professionals that fall below the standard of care for a specific professional group. Question 23. An 87-year-old woman is brought to the emergency department for treatment of a fractured arm. On physical assessment, the nurse notes old and new echematic areas on the client's chest and legs and asks the client how the bruises were sustained. The client, although reluctant, tells the nurse in confidence that her son frequently hits her if supper is not prepared on time, when he arrives home from work. Which of the following is the appropriate nursing response? A. Oh, really? I will discuss this situation with your son. B. This is a legal issue, and I must tell you that I will need to report it. C. Let's talk about the ways you can manage your time to prevent this from happening. D. Do you have any friends that can help you out until you resolve these important issues with your son? Correct answer. B. The nurse must report situations related to child or elder abuse, gunshot wounds, and other criminal acts, and certain infectious diseases. 
Confidential issues are not to be discussed with non-medical personnel or the client's family or friends without the client's permission. Clients should be assured that information is kept confidential, unless it places the nurse under a legal obligation. Options 1, 3, and 4 do not address the legal implications of the situation and do not ensure a safe environment for the client. Question 24. A nurse calls the physician regarding a new medication prescription, because the dosage prescribed is higher than the recommended dosage. The nurse is unable to locate the physician, and the medication is due to be administered. Which action should the nurse implement? A. Contact the nursing supervisor. B. Administer the dose prescribed. C. Hold the medication until the physician can be contacted. D. Administer the recommended dose until the physician can be located. Correct answer. A. If the physician writes a prescription that requires clarification, the nurse's responsibility is to contact the physician. If there is no resolution regarding the prescription because the physician cannot be located or because the prescription remains as it was written after talking with the physician, the nurse should contact the nurse manager or nursing supervisor for further clarification as to what the next step should be. Under no circumstances should the nurse proceed to carry out the prescription until obtaining clarification. Question 25. A client involved in a head-on automobile crash has awakened from a coma and asks for her husband, who was killed in the same accident. The family does not want the client to know at this time that her husband has died. The family wants all nursing staff to tell the client that the husband was taken by helicopter to another hospital, has a head injury, and is in the intensive care unit, ICU. Because the American Nurses Association Code of Ethics requires the nurse to preserve integrity, but the nurse wants to follow the family's instruction, the nurse faces an ethical dilemma. Number in order the steps for systematic processing of the ethical dilemma. Number one is the first step, and number six is the last step. Evaluate the action. Verbalize the problem. Negotiate the outcome. Consider possible courses of action. Gather all of the information relevant to the case. Examine and determine one's own values on the issues. Correct answer, 6, 3, 5, 4, 1, 2 Ethical reasoning is the process of thinking through what one ought to do in an orderly and systematic manner to provide justification for actions based on principles. First, the nurse determines whether or not the issue involves an ethical dilemma and gathers information that is relevant to the case. Next, the nurse undertakes personal value clarification and identifies his or her own values regarding the issue. Third, the nurse verbalizes the problem in a simple sentence. Fourth, the nurse considers possible courses of action. In this case, the nurse may choose to seek the counsel of the agency's ethicist regarding the issue. Fifth, the nurse negotiates the outcome by developing a confidence in her or his own point of view with deep respect for the opinions of others. In this case, the nurse may negotiate with the family to determine a course of action that would allow the nurse to preserve integrity and yet allow the family to determine when the client should be informed of the tragic loss. Finally, the nurse evaluates the action.